Greetings, I'm Teacher T, hailing from the vibrant landscapes of Thailand, where I blend my love of teaching with my lifelong passion for motorbikes. Join me as I unveil the maiden voyage of my Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650, a journey spanning a remarkable 2,000 kilometers in my first week of ownership. From the tranquil hills of Chiang Rai, down to the heart of Thailand's metropolis, Bangkok, this vlog is more than just a ride, it's a tale of man and machine as we throttle southwards to the illustrious Bangkok Motor Show. You'll witness the ups and downs along the way, quite literally. How do we fare on this epic expedition? Buckle up and find out. Here is my lovely new Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650, day five of ownership. On day three of ownership, I reached my 500 kilometer limit to enable my first service. However, the dealer said they couldn't look at the bike for two weeks, even though they are the ones that gave me the free ticket to the motor show. Uh, needless to say, the wife got a little bit angry, phoned them up, and the service was done the next day, enabling me to attend the motor show in Bangkok. Lesson of the day, don't argue with Mrs. T. Not having any phone mount and quite happy with my previous bike, the Meteor 350, using the Tripper navigation, I thought I could navigate all the way to Bangkok and back with the Tripper. So now it's time to start our journey. So it's Friday, Friday afternoon. I've just done a whole week teaching at school. I'm now heading the 400 kilometers south to Pitsanulo for a night in the hotel. What was unexpected was that the tripper kept losing its information every 10 minutes. So at every major intersection, I would have to stop and reload the route to make sure I was taking the right direction, which cost me a lot of time. Before I knew it, it was dark. The roads were very busy with trucks. The roads were full of potholes. It was very dangerous, not a nice experience. And one lesson I learned, setting one on your rear suspension should be banned. I rode all the way to Bangkok and back on setting one on the rear suspension, carrying a backpack, which nearly broke my spine quite a few times. However, the tripper eventually got me to the hotel and this is the next morning. Well, it's rather funny that I parked next to a Bonneville last night. Looking very nice. And here is the bike. A little bit dusty already. And it's time to try and play with the tripper and see if we have more success today. Well, that's better already. All the way straight down to Bangkok. Luckily, north of Bangkok, so I don't have to go into the center. Okay, let's just see if we don't keep blipping out all the time. I didn't have the heart to tell him not made in England anymore but he was happy to see the bikes. The only thing it hasn't got is a good turning turbo. It's useless.
this day should have been an easy 350 kilometers to my destination. However, due to tripper problems and traffic problems, it took over five and a half hours. But it's not like Chiang Rai. Give me Chiang Rai any day. By early afternoon, I finally arrived at the Impact Arena in Bangkok and I'm just so glad I never had an impact on the way. And of course it would be rude not to attend the Royal Enfield stand first. A very impressive stand, probably one of the best of the show. Um, it was really nice to see the new Bullet, but I was a, a bit disappointed not to see the new Himalayan. I kind of thought that after Itchy Boots tour, her actual bike would be on display in Bangkok, but sadly that was not to be. So this was very similar to the Birmingham NEC in England. However, the very strange thing is, normally you go around to stands and get three promotional gifts all the time in England. In Thailand, you were lucky just enough to get a leaflet. That was all, no free gifts, no merchandise, no nothing. So after having my fill of Royal Enfield, it was time to discover the rest of the show. But within three and a half hours, I was totally shattered. It was such a big uh, area to cover. I did cover most things, but my energy levels were running very, very low. The new Triumph 400s were launched at this show and ever so popular because of the price point. Uh, normally, Triumphs were pretty much out of reach of the average Thai income, but now, definitely within the reach of the average Thai income, and the orders from six months ago still haven't been delivered to some of my friends who ordered them that long ago. And walking around the show with my Royal Enfield t-shirt on was probably not the best of ideas. I was getting blanked by a lot of, a lot of stalls, but the, the stalls that impressed me the most of this show were the Chinese brands, CF Moto, Hanwei, Royal Alloy. Um, these brands are coming up with some amazing looking bikes and I think I'll make a video about this in the future the Chinese bikes but here we go the Hanway 400 bobber I absolutely fell in love with this bike if I hadn't have just bought the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650 I would have bought this on the day I kind of kicked myself a little bit this was a beautiful bike and it even had a belt drive pre-fitted well what a day I'm absolutely shattered. Now I've got to try and negotiate myself out of Bangkok in peak times. When there's a hotel, there's a hotel just there. Do I stay there tonight and then do a nine hour trip tomorrow? No, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get halfway home. I'm hungry. Too, too busy in there, too many queues. And it's time to get the sorbet again, right? It's time to get the sorbet on this one. But I saw some lovely bikes today, some lovely ideas about what to do and what to get. It's a good job I buy this one first. I would have bought that little uh, voice sound. 400 bobber, I would have bought that. 179,000, wow. Lovely little bike. But you've always got that little nagging feeling, right? It's Chinese, it's gonna, it's gonna go wrong. Where this proved its might today and last night. Bombing down from Chiang Rai, 120 kilometers, 100 kilometers all the way. Not, didn't miss a beat. So, just the comfort we need to sort out from my butt. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking for street 39. After escaping the traffic jams of Bangkok, I decided to travel another hour and a half north to a small town called Ayutthaya, an ancient capital city of Thailand, to find a hotel for the night. Food was first on the list, so straight to the nearest pizza restaurant and a beer, uh, but I was shocked when using the free Wi-Fi. No hotels available this time. So I was forced to ride until midnight until I eventually found a cheap little homestay by the side of the road, a welcome bed for the night.
Well, that's better. I'm feeling less stressed today and I'm enjoying the ride today basically because I'm not rushing. I'm taking it easy. I've got all the all day to get home instead of rushing after school to get somewhere after dark. Oh, this sounds like the Harley Brigade coming in. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. It's a bank holiday in Thailand, which, which is why I'm traveling on long distance. I get the Monday off from school. What I didn't realize, what I didn't consider, is that everyone is traveling on this weekend. So I could not get a hotel room last night. I struggled, I struggled. I was driving till midnight until I actually found a very basic room. But it sufficed, I had some sleep, and, and today is really good. So here we are in Kampang Pet. It's a diversion on the way home because it's an old historical city and it's absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. Here is an old palace, an old temple for the king, I presume. And uh, it's completely surrounded by a moat and old city walls. And uh, yeah, what a beautiful day, what a beautiful cruise. Relaxed, feeling much better today. So I'm going to walk around here quickly in a minute to show you. To be honest, I'm enjoying this more than the motor show. It's a bit of history. I'd love to get my metal detector from England in here. Oh my goodness. Bound to be some buried treasures of gold here somewhere. But look at it, volcanic rock. Very ancient. Very ancient and very beautiful even though it's in ruins. Wow. Wow. So I'm still down in the south, really, and it's a lot hotter here than it is in Chiang Rai. So I'm looking forward to cooler Chiang Rai. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. So that's it. A quick stop, a quick five minute stop. Cost me a hundred baht, which I'm a bit sad about, but there we go. And the next stop is going to be Sukhothai, which has got loads of ancient ruins like this, about 10 times bigger. Um, so I'm going to stop there quickly on the way back to Chiang Rai also. And I hope to be back at Chiang Rai sometime tonight. Don't want any hotel problems like last night. <laughs> right, so far on this trip, 1,150 kilometers. I've got at least six hours ahead of me before I get home tonight. And I'm only halfway now between Kampang Pet and Sukhothai. And I will be stopping there to do more videos also. But I just saw this on the way, thought it was absolutely beautiful. And it's full of fish as well. So I think after nearly 15 hours in the seat on this baby, I think we've got to know each other very well and mm, it's a lot different than my Meteor but it's not a lot different than my Meteor 350. The engine, the engine is superb which is one of the reasons I bought this bike. The engine is absolutely superb. It's got such good acceleration and it's, it's happy to tick along at slow speeds also. So slow speed or high speed, it's fantastic. Cruising at low speed. It's lovely, a lovely experience. 60 to 80 kilometers per hour is a lovely experience. 100, a little bit dicey. 120, impossible on these Thai roads with that rear suspension and the hard seat. It's, it's too much. You go, over, you go over a bump, you're nearly flown into orbit. So I do need to either change the suspension or um, upgrade the suspension and upgrade the seat to, upgrade the seat to a gel seat. So a bit of work to do. Also the handlebars, I'm in two minds whether to make them higher or not. But uh, in all, I'm impressed with the engine. I'm impressed with the performance. I'm impressed with the cornering. I'm just not impressed with the comfort of the ride at high speed. Low speed, not a problem. But high speed, there is a problem.
Well, thank you McDonald's for my breakfast. And this is how we've got our tripper working. Let's see if it stays connected. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Has it remembered my trip? Yes, it has, and it's on. So what I'm finding is I've got to have my USB plugged in and have a full battery all the time and then it doesn't cut out and then it remembers the trip even after I've been in McDonald's for 30 minutes it's remembered everything and it doesn't switch off anymore and it's actually working which we'll hopefully show you now so I could just put the phone in my pocket the cable's long enough for me to get over the bike and uh, everything's tickety-boo at last we're happy with the tripper. And now I'm starting to realize that maybe the problem wasn't with the tripper, but with my old Oppo phone. So with the permanent charge, it doesn't cut out as often, and it got me all the way to Sukhothai, no problems. To the right, modern day Sukhothai, to the left, Sukhothai Historic National Park. Sukhothai was founded in the early 13th century, around 1238, and it is the ancient capital city of Siam. Siam changed its name to Thailand in 1939. Sukhothai is now recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. The historical city covers an area as large as 70 square kilometers, so it's not an easy one to walk around. The most popular form of transport is either bicycle or electric vehicle. The whole city is surrounded by a square moat, as you can see from the satellite image, and those bicycles and EVs can easily be rented on site. The tripper navigation is now set to destination Chiang Rai. I haven't studied the route, I'm just trusting what the motorbike is telling me on the tripper. And this turns out to be one of the best rides I've had in Thailand for a long time. Here, the tripper navigation kicks in and tells me to turn right with plenty of pre-warning and it starts to flash when it is the exact time to turn. Very precise. Even though the signpost says road 102, according to Google Maps, this is road 113 heading north out of Sukhothai Historical Park. As we head north on road 113, the terrain starts to change. We're leaving the flatlands and entering the hills. The twists and turns are starting to spice things up, making it a perfect ride. I am now in motorbike heaven. This is what biking is all about. Good roads, no traffic and lovely viewpoints. The north of Thailand. That is fantastic. I'm so pleased we came this way. So after gathering my thoughts and getting some true enlightenment, I spotted a coffee shop on the next lay-by down. So it's time for iced coffee. Look at that. 
lesson learnt, get off the main roads, get off the main roads. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Body camp. Body camp. Ko latte yen camp. No problem. Hello. 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 Hello, Luke. Hello, Luke. Hello. As you can tell, I'm a dog lover, but if a dog has its tail down and won't approach you, don't touch it. Thai dogs will bite. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So here I am feeling on top of the world, a motorcyclist dream, feeling rested and refreshed after my iced latte coffee. It's time to hit the road again. The sun is casting its warm glow on these mountain roads. We're soaking up every moment of daylight as we ride through this glorious landscape. I've got just two hours of daylight left. As I'm cruising, I have time to reflect on this 1,600 km two-day journey. The crazy bumpy and busy roads to Bangkok. The Expo 23 motor show. My brief stop in Ayutthaya and last finding relaxation in Kampang Pet and Sukhothai. The air is crisp, the engine is purring and the mountains are calling. The relentless vibrations and jolts through the bike are behind me. This road is an absolute pleasure. As the sun starts to dip below the horizon, we're gearing up for the next leg of our journey night riding here we come the road ahead is about to transform but the camera batteries are flat and memory cards are full but Chiang Rai here we come I left home Friday afternoon 3 p.m. I get home Sunday evening 8 p.m. luckily I get Monday off from work it's a bank holiday ready for me to recharge and give lessons for Tuesday morning. As I check trip A odometer, it's showing 599 kilometers. This is because it resets at 1000. So in total, 1599.2 kilometers, plus the 580 kilometers that I did pre-journey. So within a week of ownership, over 2000 kilometers on my brand new Super Meteor 650. Um, how did she cope? Very well. Uh, I decided to buy a gel pad to help with the comfort for the seat. I made a video about it and obviously I've made a video about the shocks since and many more videos actually uh, even comparing the Meteor 350 to the Meteor 650. So if you want to see any of those videos you know what to do. Please like, please subscribe and Teacher T will see you in a new video very soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.